unlike Lenin, who was kind of a middle class guy, Stalin actually was from the working class. But he was not the best known star of the Soviet government under Lenin. That goes to Trotsky, who was the war minister under Lenin during the war. And, and when war communism came, as I described, this complete and sudden nationalization of everything. Um, and when the white army was being stamped out, that was happening under Trotsky. Um, there was a disagreement, as there often were, within the uh, Communist Party among the Bolsheviks, there was a disagreement over how to proceed. For Trotsky, the only way to proceed was to communize the whole world. The communist revolution had to happen all over the world in order for it to be complete and possible um, and in order for it to really have occurred, um, to have really taken root in Russia. Stalin thought that they should consolidate the, the revolution, as it were, in Russia. Both were agreed that this was the beginning of what Marxism foretold, which is this great uprising of the proletariat, of the, of the working class. But here's what Stalin wrote later on about Trotsky and the differences between them. I'm getting this, by the way, from Marxists.org, which is a website where I spend perhaps a little too much time. Um, it's a wonderful resource website that collates enormous voluminous writings from Marxists in their own words. And so a lot of this stuff that I was talking about last week with Lenin and his directives to liquidate entire classes of people um, comes from Marxists.org. There are people who still defend this stuff, right? Um, so here's, here's Stalin. Trotsky, Zinoviev, Kamenev, and those other gentlemen who later became spies and agents of fascism denied that it was possible to build socialism in our country unless the victory of the socialist revolution was first achieved in other countries, in capitalist countries. As a matter of fact, these gentlemen wanted to turn our country back to the path of bourgeois development, and they concealed their apostasy by hypocritically talking about the victory of the revolution in other countries. This was precisely the point of controversy between our party and these gentlemen. Our country's subsequent course of development proved that the party was right and that Trotsky and company were wrong. For during this period, we succeeded in liquidating our bourgeoisie, in establishing fraternal collaboration with our peasantry, and in building, in the main, socialist society, notwithstanding the fact that the socialist revolution has not yet been victorious in other countries. This is the position in regard to the first side of the question of the victory of socialism in our country. When Lenin died, he had not named a successor. It wasn't clear who was going to take over. Stalin turned out to be the one. And you can hear in this letter the relentlessness that earned him, uh, if you may call it that, that got him to the head of the party. He says, don't worry about other countries. What our work under Lenin has showed is that socialism can come into being now. And by the way, gradualism is apostasy, right? The idea that maybe some of these changes can come about over time, um, the idea that maybe we need to, you know, work our way toward uh, these things without killing people who disagree with us. Um, all of this is just a mask, a mask for backsliding and retrogression. This would become the psychology of Stalin that dominated the Soviet Union under his tenure, culminating in the 19. 37 Great Purge, which I talked about last week. But one of the things that Solzhenitsyn stresses, remember this is the, the writer of the Gulag Archipelago, the great dissident who was himself imprisoned in Gulag um, during, from 1945 onward, he was uh, accused of, of writing letters in which he criticized Stalin. So even though he had fought in World War II uh, in the Russian army, even though he was obviously an admirable uh, so soldier and intellectual, um, he was imprisoned for having written bad things about Stalin. And that gives you a sense. This is a man whose ruthlessness and whose liquidation of the bourgeoisie is not some kind of mistake, but rather a claim to fame. It, he, he presents it as one of his achievements. Um, Solzhenitsyn talks about Stalin as if 
he were Satan himself. He talks about Stalin having hooves. I mentioned earlier that he, you know, he lays the death, death after death at Stalin's feet. Um, and if Lenin, you know, is the man that we, if, if in Lenin's rule, we see how gradually utopianism can develop into horror. Um, under Stalin, we see how capable the human consciousness is of fully believing that horror is victory. This is the, the true and total inversion of the human psyche, the human moral consciousness um, displayed across an entire country and in the suffering of millions. It's really a, a drastic and chilling and terrifying thing